What next for me? Maybe a third boxing match? A third I boxing match? Didn't this guy sign a contract with the PFL? I feel like boxing owes me something now. Yeah, pal. And you were was at MMA fight. I have to regain uh, what boxing take out of a dick from me. I think uh, my ego would not let me step back and let this go like this, you know, without doing everything to restore and prove the world that I'm the man of the job. I can do it, you know. I slipped, but uh, I didn't fall. Here's to the fighters, the fans on the game. Here's to the blood, sweat and tears on the fame. And here's to as in key, you're ready to go on the brutally honest. MMA show. Exposing Francis Ngannou for the absolute disgusting piece of shit that he is, allegedly, he absolutely 100% allegedly swindled the MMA community. And before we get into it, hit that like button, roast me in the comments, and subscribe. Do you remember the fire to pay argument that he was raising? How he was an advocate for fire to pay, protesting for sponsorship. Because what happened to you was really unfair and you're brave and you're a pioneer as well in what it is that you're doing. So brave, Francis Ngannou. All that money you've raised to line your own pockets through the power of boxing. In fighting for the rights of fighters. Uh, when you say a few pennies, though, I know you got to get out a few pennies. It was more than a few pennies, but it wasn't what you were worth. What was the what were the dollar amounts we're talking about there? Hundred, hundred twenty. Oh no, a hundred or hundred twenty grand to fight as a as a as a main card. Oh no, oh come yeah. on, man, really? <laughs> oh man, that bad? Yeah. Except, what's he done? What the fuck has Francis Ngannou done since then? Um, well, we're going to expose that because Francis Ngannou has come out and said that he's going to box for a third time. So he's had his payday with Tyson Fury. He's had his payday with Anthony Joshua. And instead of going back to the MMA community, the one that he was fighting so hard to improve and give back to, he has decided to turn his back. PFL was always plan B. And it will never be plan A. And he will not ever fight in MMA again. He's going to boxing. He, and maybe if he loses two or three fights in the boxing, he'll come back to MMA. But I think he'll retire. I do. So let's get back to it. So where do we start first? Let's talk about PFL. The contract that he set up with PFL. Uh, they put my opponent is going to have a base salary of a guarantee of two million. He promised fighter to pay for his opponent. He said that guaranteed two million for the fight for, for the fighter that he fights, which will be Enan Ferreira. He'll never see that money. He'll never see that payday because Francis Ngannou was not fighting in the PFL. Back in 2023, the PFL released a press statement and it was all about the signing of Francis Ngannou. And it clearly says there, Ngannou to star in PFL pay-per-view super fight division in 2024. And then as we scroll further down and read more into it, it says Ngannou will make his pay-per-view a super fight debut in mid-2024. Now that doesn't look like it's going to happen because he's chosen to fight Wilder next. Francis Ngannou also promised PFL Africa. The reason why I signed with the PFL is because of their willing to develop the sport, most importantly in Africa. I stand for my people, for my community, I fight for them. And to get something like this, to bring back home, is like a huge accomplishment. They promoted Francis Ngannou as the chairman of PFL Africa and almost made it seem like he was going to headline an event in Africa. But it's not going to happen. He's not fighting in MMA this year. He's taken another boxing fight with Deontay Wilder and completely shunned the African audience that he was going to build and develop. He's turned his back on Africa. He's turned his back on the MMA community. How much more do you need to see that Dana White was absolutely fucking right? Absolutely fucking right and vindicated in those contract negotiations. Imagine if Dana White had allowed him to box in his contract, allowed him to have sponsorship in his contract. He would not be fighting right now in the in the UFC. He would not have defended the UFC heavyweight title. He would have boxed and then he would have boxed again and then boxed for a fair time. So Dana White is vindicated for all his actions in those Ngannou 
negotiations. Ngannou was protesting that the UFC were ripping him off. Ngannou has done the same. He's swindled the MMA community, he's swindled Africa. He's used that to leverage a better deal for himself, leverage a better deal in the boxing to get his name out there in the boxing. So much that he lost his first fight. He lost his second fight in the boxing. And at this point, you'd think, okay, he's had two shots in the boxing against formidable opponents. And he's not just not quite, he's not quite as good as everyone expected. And Garnu is looking for more paydays. And Garnu wants to box again. And Garnu wants a wilder fight. He wants more money. The MMA fan base bought his Robin Hood fucking narrative outline and sinker. Absolutely. PFL, you're guilty in this too. You're an absolute shambles on letting this absolute muppet fucking dictate to you what you have in your contract negotiations. The fact that you did not put a stipulation in your contract that after boxing, he fights in PFL before he can box again. You're absolutely fucking mad. And Garnu talked about fighter freedom and that's something that he wanted in his UFC contract. And he got it in the PFL contract. The freedom that Ngani wants is one way. It's not a negotiation. It's not a two sides meeting and having an agreement. It's just Ngani way or no way. And that's kind of sad because there's all these fighters actually fighting for fighter freedoms and fighter pay rises. And he's absolutely shitting on the entire community and other fighters trying to uh, better themselves and, and not just make money but to earn a living and to secure the family's food on the table and put a roof over the head while Ngarnu is using that as a base to leverage his own negotiations to make himself filthy rich absolutely stinking fucking filthy rich it's disgusting he's worse than Jake Paul he's worse than Jake Paul Logan Paul that's something to be said that is something to be said Ngarnu used the pain and suffering of others to promote himself on the top. He used Africa, he used MMA fighters, he used the MMA community, he used the MMA media to leverage and position himself in the best position to get these boxing fights and this big money. Otherwise, the boxing world wouldn't have fucking cared about Ngarnu. He would have drifted off and ended up in the PFL. Francis Ngannou pretended to be an advocate for fighter pay, an advocate for fighter health care after and beyond their MMA careers. He acted like Gandhi fucking reincarnated. But who the fuck is Francis Ngannou? Because he is not that guy. He is not the guy fighting for the fighters. He's not the guy fighting for fighter pay. He's not the guy advocating for extended health care beyond the years of the MMA careers of fighters. Well, who is Francis Ngannou? He's an absolute despicable, selfish, greedy fighter. Ngannou used the situation around him, the sob stories of others to promote himself. He was the Robin Hood of the MMA community, take from the rich and give to the poor. Well, fuck you, Francis Ngannou. Thank you very much for joining me. Please like, subscribe and comment, and I'll see you in the next one.